everyone. Welcome and thank you so much for joining me on this lovely day. So today I am going to show you how to crochet a summer inspired sunglasses case. So first up, I will show you how to crochet the Marguerite stitch, which is the star of this pattern, which is funny because it's actually called the star stitch as well. And then we will follow that up with the whip stitch, which is how we seam those panels together. And then I will finish this video off by showing you how to sew a metal flex frame to the top of the sunglasses case. Abby and I am the designer behind So Homey and this tutorial is for a pattern that I wrote myself. It was designed by me and it is called the MJ42 and it is the first pattern of three from my summer collection which I have called the Mary Jane series. So I made this collection with you guys in mind because I wanted to inspire you to crochet during the summer. Because, at least in my experience, I know that crochet can get neglected during those hot summer days and for good reason, but I don't think that crochet is a seasonal hobby, which is really what sparked the idea behind this collection. The stitch pattern is really what set this collection into motion. I was flipping through my copy of the Crochet Every Way Stitch Dictionary, which every crocheter should have it on their bookshelf because it's a fantastic book, so I'll link it down below for you guys. But um, anyway, as I was flipping through that book, I just stopped on the page where the Marguerite stitch was. I was really drawn to it because it has such a feminine and summery appearance. It was just the exact stitch pattern that I was looking for. And the first thing that I thought of actually was a sunglasses case, which you saw in the intro, which I have right here. But obviously I didn't stop there because it is a collection of three patterns. So I came up with the coin purse and then also the clutch. And these two patterns, uh, the clutch and coin purse, will be featured in future videos. But I wanted to give you a little sneak peek on what to expect in the coming weeks. So with the sunglasses case, I really imagine it getting tossed into a beach bag and toted to the beach or to the pool or also maybe thrown into the car or the purse, which is probably what I'm going to use it for. But this case is very soft but sturdy because the Marguerite stitch creates this thick and textured fabric. And then the whip stitch is what holds the two panels together, which creates a very sturdy seam, which I think is the perfect combination for protecting your sunglasses. And then the squeeze frame closure at the top is very practical, but it also gives it a very fun and unique addition to the sunglasses case. Before we get into this tutorial, you want to grab the pattern and there are a few places you can do so. First and foremost, you can find this pattern for free on my website and it includes all of the written instructions to complete this pattern. But also, if you would like to support me as a designer, I created a very inexpensive PDF version of this pattern that's available for purchase in my Etsy shop and on my Ravelry page. And within the PDF version of the pattern, all of the written instructions are detailed there with all of the materials and I also provide extra picture and video resources just to make it very concise and easy for you guys to complete this pattern. And again, I have all of those links in the description box. Once you have the pattern, you want to grab a few more materials so that you can complete this project. So the yarn that I use is Lion Brand Comfy Cotton Blend Yarn. It is a DK weight yarn and it's 50% cotton and 50% polyester. I chose this yarn purely because I had a full skein of it on hand, but I was also looking for a cotton blend yarn because uh, cotton is very durable and it's washable, which are characteristics that you want for a sunglasses case. In addition to the yarn, you will also need a crochet hook size USG or four millimeter hook. Also a tapestry needle, measuring tape, scissors, and also a metal flex frame. 
First, I want to show you how to crochet the marguerite stitch. Now, I want to mention that I did do a full length tutorial on this stitch pattern, which I will provide in the description box for you uh, below in case you need it. But for the purposes of this video, I am just showing you a condensed version of the marguerite stitch. So you're going to start with any number of chains to begin with and then we're going to be working into the back bump which is this part right here for example uh, but we want to find that first chain uh, which is right here and then we're going to flip it over and you're going to see that there's a back ridge and that is the back bump we want to insert the hook into that back bump and that first one can be a little bit tricky at first but then we pull uh, that yarn over through and then we're going to insert the hook into the next back bump yarn over pull yarn through now we have three loops uh, and we're going to do this to the next three back bumps so that we have a total of six loops of yarn on our hook so here's that last one oops i lost it but there we go we have one, two four and six then we yarn over one more time and pull that piece of yarn all the way through all six of those. Then we're going to chain one to close the marguerite, and that is called the eye. Now we have six legs, so one, two, three, four, five, and six. That sixth one that is important. So we're going to continue the marguerites. We yarn over and pull a loop through the eye, and we yarn over and pull a loop through that last leg, which is the sixth leg. And then we pull a loop through the same chain space as that last leg. And then we just uh, pull yarn through the next two back bumps of the next two chains. So then we'll have another total of six loops on our hook. We yarn over, pull the yarn through, and then we will chain one to complete the eye. Then we just continue the same process until we get to the last stitch. And then we add a half double crochet into the same chain space as that last leg of the marguerite. And you can see we have a nice even uh, finish at the bottom. And then to finish the marguerite, we have to chain one and complete row number two. So we're going to put a single crochet in that half double crochet. And then we will go and put a single crochet into the eye of the marguerite and then in the next eye we're going to add two single crochets rather than just one and then we're going to continue this until we have no more eyes left just put two single crochets there but then whenever you get to the very last one you're going to put two single crochets and then you're going to add one single crochet into that chain space like I'm doing now and that is the two row repeat to complete the marguerite stitch and then from here on out you want to chain two and then you this will start the uh, first row of the marguerites again so this time you want to uh, insert your hook into the back bumps of the chain two like I am showing you how to do now that's one loop and then go through that next back loop so now we have a total of three loops on our hook. So now we're going to go into the next three single crochets and pull up a loop so that we have a total of six loops on our crochet hook. And then we yarn over and then we'll pull that yarn all the way through, chain one to make the eye. And then you can complete the same exact process as I showed you for row number one and just complete that all the way through to the end of the row and remember to add a half double crochet in that very last chain space as the last leg of the last marguerite if that makes sense and then you'll chain one and continue row number two the exact same way where you single crochet into that half double crochet single crochet into the next eye and then after that two single crochets in each eye across and that is how you complete a marguerite stitch. So after you crochet your two panels made up of the marguerite stitch, we have the base for our sunglasses case. Now all we need to do is whip stitch those two panels together and that's what I'm going to show you now. 
So this is what your panel should look like so far. We have one panel where all of the marguerites are on the front side and then this is the back side and all the ends are woven in and then we have our second panel with the marguerites on one side and then you know the back side and then we also have a long yarn tail attached to the top so that we can whip stitch both panels together. Now you also want to grab some stitch markers and then your tapestry needle so that we can whip stitch the sunglasses case together. Next we want to make sure that our panels are aligned correctly. So we're going to be looking at the bottom which is right here you can see that nice and even edge and then you want to go to row number two and look at your single crochets and make sure that they're facing the correct way. They should look like Greek pie symbols. And then again, you have that nice even edge which was created from using the back bumps. And then we should see the Greek pie symbol on row number two, which are represented by our single crochets. Now you can grab one panel and place it on top of the other, making sure to put both sides with the marguerites facing inward. And then we will grab our stitch markers and begin pinning the two panels together so that we can whip stitch the sunglasses case very easily. It doesn't matter the way that you pin the panels together. I typically like to start with the corners just to make sure that the corners are gonna be even and you'll see me, I'll only pin three corners down and then the corner with the long yarn tail, I won't do anything with that one because I'll just immediately have to take it out once I start stitching with it. But once I have the corners done then I like to kind of pull the fabric and make sure that it's all even and then I'll place a marker in the center and then I'll flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. But you can see this one, the panels got a little bit more off because of the nature of how the Marguerite stitch is crocheted. But then I add that last stitch marker and we're ready to start whip stitching. Now you wanna go ahead and thread your tapestry needle with your yarn and flip over the panels so that we can start whip stitching. So my yarn is coming from the top right corner of the back panel. And so I am going to insert my needle towards me and I'm just going through the edge of that first row. So the edge of those two stitches and I'm going through both panels and then I will pull that yarn all the way through. And you do wanna make sure that you put your needle as close to the top as possible so that we can cinch the top closed. And then you're gonna to go to the second row and then insert your needle away from you and pull that yarn all the way through and again making sure that you pull that yarn tight and then you're just going to go down a row insert that needle underneath the next two stitches and the needle will be coming towards you and then pull the yarn all the way through and then you just go down the, to the next row and insert your needle the opposite way so away from you and that is literally all that there is to the whip stitch. It is that easy and it creates a very sturdy seam, which I already talked about, but it's perfect for the sunglasses case. Now all you have to do is work your way along the rest of this side, along the bottom, and then whip stitch that opposite side, that long one, fasten it off by tying a knot and then weave in that end. And you have yourself a sunglasses case that is open at the top. Now. Each time that you are whip stitching, you are working towards the stitch markers. And I do wanna point out that the stitch markers are there to help the panels remain in place so that you don't get uneven sides stitched together. So you do want to continuously make sure that the sides are in fact in the right place uh, just to minimize any error and um, any ripping back. So just keep that in mind and as soon as you get to the stitch marker, just remove it and continue whip stitching along. And I don't think I need to show you anymore. I think you get the picture. Just go back and forth and that's all there is to that whip stitch. Once you have the panels all whip stitched together, this is what you should have. And this is going to be the inside of the case. That's why we left the top open so that we can flip the sunglasses case right side out. And you might have to play with the bottom to get the corners out. Um, sometimes they like to stick, but totally fine. But here you go. This is what we have. This is the sunglasses case. And now all we do is add the flex frame. And I will show you how to do that in the next segment. Finally, I am going to show you how to get that flex frame onto the top of our sunglasses case. Now, I will admit that it looks a little bit complicated, 
but I promise it's easier than you think and I walk you through the entire process. So this is what a flex frame looks like. It measures four inches, uh, at least for the sunglasses case, but it opens on one end and then the other hinge is closed, which is exactly what you want. But we're gonna begin by wrapping yarn around the flex frame, starting from the inside of the hinge, working our way out. And we do this so that we have a yarn tail on the outside because that makes sewing it to the top of the sunglasses case much easier. But the first step of wrapping the yarn to the, or around the flex frame is to actually tie a knot so that your yarn is secure. So I like to uh, take the yarn and put it through uh, the hole two times uh, before pulling it closed. I just find that that uh, stays in place much easier than just doing it once but then I do it one more time like I just showed you uh, to secure it and now we have uh, the start or the first wrap around our flex frame so now you just want to start wrapping it doesn't really matter if you start from the top or the bottom you just want to try to keep the wraps of yarn as close together as possible because we don't want to see the flex frame in between the yarn and then as you wrap around, make sure that you are hiding that yarn tail on the inside. That will save you so much work. And yeah, it just looks a lot better if you can hide it too. Um, and right here, um, it's starting to get twisted. So you definitely want to pay attention to that because you don't want any twisting. It will look weird because this is the side that you're going to see after you sew it to the sunglasses case. So again, just wrap it around. Make sure that you put the yarn as close together as possible. And I find it easiest if you wrap it around a few times and then you kind of cinch those uh, wraps of yarn together uh, a little bit closer. That way you can fit more on there. And then I like to use the, or at least my rule of thumb, I guess, is to wrap the yarn around the flex frame about three times the number of stitches that you have uh, that you're going to be sewing the flex frame to. So for example, say that the panels of the sunglasses case measure 10 stitches. Well, then you would take 10 times three because you want three times the number of wraps, so that's 30. So I would wrap the yarn around about 30 times on the flex frame. Um, and then if you have a little bit more space, you can add more. And then if you don't have enough space, that's totally fine. Less is good too. I'll just show you what to do on the next portion whenever we actually sew this to the top of the sunglasses case. I just wanted to mention that so that you know about how many times to wrap it. Um, but yeah, I think you get the picture. So... We'll go ahead and skip forward and I'll show you how to sew this to the sunglasses case. You'll notice that I did tie the end of that yarn uh, just to keep that wrap from coming undone. But now we're ready to sew the flex frame to the top of the panel. And we're gonna start with the back panel. Uh, doesn't matter, I just like to start with the back for some reason. So I have my yarn threaded uh, with my tapestry needle. So I'm going through that first stitch from front to back um, and this is the stitch that's closest to that seam and then I'm pulling the yarn closed all the way or as close as I can and then I'm going to take the first three of the wraps of yarn which is why I told you groups of three and then I'm going to uh, pull that yarn all the way through and I'm going to pull it as tight as possible so that that flex frame meets up with the sunglasses case and I did insert my needle from left to right on that one now I'm going through the next stitch and I went from the front to back this time as well pulled the yarn as tight as possible and then I'm going to insert the needle from left to right underneath the next three wraps of yarn so I have my three and I have my needle uh, going from the left side and ending up on the right side. Then I'm going to pull that yarn all the way through again and pull it as tight as possible so that it closes up any gaps. Then I'm just going to move on to that next stitch and insert my needle from front to back, 
pull that yarn all the way through and then we're just going to repeat that process we go through from left to right those next three wraps of yarn so i have one two and three pick all three of those up like i am doing now it gets a little tight sometimes uh, but you just want to do about three times and then pull that yarn through all the way and cinch it closed so like i said we're going to continue this process until we reach the very end of that row and the flex frame and i mentioned that you want to wrap the yarn in multiples of three and that's just because we're picking up three wraps of yarn per stitch but it's also okay if you have more or if you have less just kind of eyeball it and sometimes you might need to pick up four wraps of yarn sometimes you might need to just pick up two um, just eyeball it or keep it exact if you can it usually gets off whenever you have bigger flex frames but for the sunglasses case about three times the number of stitches that you have should work for you so go ahead and finish up this side of the sunglasses case and then I will show you how I like to get started on the next side of the flex frame. We have one side of the flex frame sewn to our sunglasses case. Now we need to wrap yarn around our second side of the flex frame. So you want to start by wrapping the yarn from the outside in because that's where you want your excess yarn. That means we will begin by tying a knot on the outside and again i do like to pass that little yarn tail through the knot two times because i find that the yarn will actually stay in place and then i will tie it once more to double knot it and that will make sure that the yarn tail and that first wrap is not going to go anywhere and then after we have that first wrap done we have that knot all we do is wrap the yarn as we did on the first side, we're just going to wrap from the outside in and on the way we're going to be hiding that yarn tail on the inside of the flex frame. So I'll go ahead and let you do that and I will meet you at the end and show you how to sew this part of the flex frame to the sunglasses case. So I went ahead and tied a knot so that all of those yarn wraps are secure and they're not going to go anywhere. And I still have my needle threaded, so now we're ready to seam or sew the front side of the flex frame to our sunglasses case. So I'm trying to find the first stitch here, which is going to be closest to the hinge. And then I'm inserting the needle from the wrong side to the right side. And then I'm going to try to pull that as close to possible to the flex frame. Next, I'm going to go through three wraps of yarn, just as we did for the front side, and I'm inserting my needle from the left to the right side, and then I pull that yarn all the way through. And again, I'm going to try to keep this as tight as possible, but the first few are a little bit tricky. You're going to see the flex frame flip-flop around, but that's totally normal. I'm just trying to get this started. So I found the second stitch and I inserted the needle from the wrong side to the right side. So I'm pulling the yarn all the way out and then I try to pull that as tight as possible. And then after I do that, I go th under the next three yarn wraps on the flex frame and I insert the needle from left to right and then I pull that closed. And again, I am pulling that as tight as possible, but as you go one by one, you'll be able to cinch it up tighter and it will get easier as you go. Now I'm looking for the next one. So I found that third stitch. I pulled my yarn all the way through and then I'm gonna go through the next three yarn wraps on the flex frame. And again, we are just repeating this exact same process as we did on the back side of our sunglasses case. Now the only difference is as we continue, like I am showing you now, since I got it all started, now I'm going to try to keep that flex frame closed almost. So the closer we get, the more closed it's going to be. So it's very open right now as you see, but as we um, add more stitches and we pull that yarn even tighter, you will notice that the hinge begins to close and that's exactly what we want. So 
This is the way that I could show you on camera. This is how it worked for me, but you might just play with the way that you hold the flex frame and the sunglasses case and your tapestry needle. You might find a better way, but this was the easiest way I could show you on camera. So I think I've shown you enough and I think that you get the picture. So I'm going to go ahead and leave you here and I will show you a little bit more at the end and then I will show you how to close the flex frame so that we can actually use the sunglasses case. So I have only one side left and I just wanted to show you how I tend to do it and how I like to finish this off. Again, it's a little uh, difficult to watch, I guess. It's kind of hard to see. You're just going to have to play with it. Uh, but it, it's not hard. Again, it's not hard. It just might take a little bit of time to get used to. But after you go through those last three loops, I like to insert the needle through the center part of where that hinge is going to close. And then I like to tie a very tight knot right here. And this is going to keep that yarn from coming undone. And then um, you'll be ready to weave in that end. So that is how you attach a metal flex frame, or at least I should say that is how you sew one to the top of the sunglasses case, and this is what you should have so far. Now all you need is that little pin that came with the flex frame and a pair of pliers. So our hinge is still open on that last part where we seamed, so now you just want to match those sides up so that the pin will fit through and then you slide that pin through the center sometimes it takes a little bit because the flex frame doesn't want to cooperate but you know just put that pin in there and then once it's there you grab the pliers and then you'll notice the two little tabs there's one on the top and then one on the bottom and you just want to use the pliers to close that and typically i find it's easier to work one uh, side at a time so I'm, I got the first part down and then I'll do the second I'll just shove that tab over and then I like to just go over the top of it and squeeze it just to make sure that that hinge is going to stay closed and then uh, that's all there is to that you close up that hinge and your flex frame is attached and now you have a completed sunglasses case now all there is to do is admire your handiwork <laughs> and have fun with that flex frame. So I hope you enjoyed learning these new techniques with me today. I had a lot of fun designing this pattern and I hope that you love the sunglasses case as much as I do. Now if you liked this project and if you like this tutorial, please hit that like button. Let me know in the comment section what you think about it and also consider subscribing to my channel. And I want to thank you guys again so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.